Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Aria Berliner, and I'm the lead staff for the Electric Bicycle and Census Project. Today, we'll be discussing the, the solicitation for this project. We will not be discussing incentive amounts, eligible bicycles, and any other policy topics. Today's focus is to help potential applicants for administering the program understand what to expect in the coming weeks. This meeting is being recorded and will be posted to our website within a week or so, uh, give or take a few days. Um, in the 2021-2022 state budget, CARB was appropriated $10 million to establish the Electric Bicycle Incentives Project to provide financial incentives for purchasing electric bicycles. Up to 10% of those funds can be used to support safety education programs. As part of this funding, we are able to provide incentives for different types of e-bikes. With the adoption of the fiscal year 2021-2022 funding plan, the CARB board officially established the Electric Bicycle Incentives Project. Moving on to solicitation details, this is, this is the meat. Um, so for timelines, we don't have exact dates yet, but we hope to launch our solicitation within the next one to two months. The solicitation will be open for at least 30 days. The solicitation will be noticed via Gov Delivery on our website and on the California Grants Portal. There will be at least one solicitation, excuse me, there will be at least one solicitation teleconference and that date will be forthcoming and it'll, it will be announced in the solicitation itself. Um, we expect to review solicitations over a four to six week period, depending on how many applications we receive. After all applications have been received, we will provide a list of the applicants on the CARB website. Uh, so that's before we announce the winners. And then we will notify the solicitation winner via email and post the winner on the CARB website. And this is all um, uh, consistent with our ACWIP guidelines. Requi bleh, excuse me, requirements. This solicitation will be open to local air districts, California-based public entities and California-based nonprofit organizations with expertise in e-bikes, vehicle incentive projects, and or air quality. Expectations. Expectations of the applicants and solicitation. Uh, first and foremost, we expect that applicants will, del will deliver completed and signed applications on time. Applicants applying to the solicitation will need to demonstrate that they will be able to implement this project and complete the work in a timely manner. In addition, they will need to show how they will develop the project. Experience is always a key category when we evaluate applications. So keep, in, so keep that in mind if you don't have the direct necessary experience to implement an incentive program for e-bikes that, that you bring together the right partnerships to do, to do so. I'll discuss partnerships um, a bit more soon. We expect that the entity chosen to run this project will have the necessary, necessary, yeah, the necessary resources like staff and experience. Give me one second, I'm gonna take a sip of water because I keep fumbling over words. Okay, much better. Applicants should keep in mind that this solicitation will include current funding available and the, and the potential for future funding. Budgets will need to be both scalable and competitive. To help put, um, to, help build, to help put building a budget into context for you, our grants currently support anywhere from 5% to 25% of the total grant for project implementation. The amount really depends, uh, depends on the project and what it includes. At this time, we don't envision planning a cap on implementation costs, but again, a competitive budget will be a critical component in our scoring. Also, it is important to know that these projects do have a 5% cap on any indirect administrative costs. Those being things like, sh like shared office space, subscription services, shared across other programs you implement, and executive salaries anything that is not directly and completely necessary for getting the incentives 
um, getting the incentives from inception to consumer. We are looking for applicants that can demonstrate strong partnerships with CBOs and other community-based organizations. And CBOs um, stand for community-based organizations. If I throw out an acronym that you don't know, that's totally fine. Please just raise your hand and ask for clarification. As noted above, partnerships are, as noted prior, partnerships are very important and can be, and can also be helpful for managing a competitive budget. Applicants may seek partnerships with other entities to strengthen staff resources, as well as supplement areas of expertise. For example, if your organization knows everything about e-bikes, but has never implemented a purchase incentive project, partnering with an entity that has that experience may make your application stronger. Keep in mind that you'll want to partner with the strongest experience overall to be the prime, you'll want to partner with the strongest experience overall to be the primary applicant. With that, and I know that was a lot, are there any questions? Before we open up for questions, we'll let folks um, uh, get the instructions for that. There's a couple things within the chat to flag for you. Um, we've posted the link to the agenda today, which are is just kind of walk through. It's a very light agenda, which is why we don't have it up on the screen. Um, but I've also provided a link to the California grants portal that Aria has mentioned. That link is um, an important one. And for those that are interested in administering programs beyond this one, um, I would I recommend folks check that often. All of the grant solicitations that we run and our grant opportunities are listed there as well as those from other state agencies. So it's a really great resource to have uh, in your favorites if you don't already have it there. With that, um, Anthony, you wanna walk folks through how to participate. Yeah, so if you uh, raise your hand, um, then I will see that you have uh, been um, flagged as wanting to ask a question or make, make a comment. Um, I see one raised hand right now, and then I will uh, let you know when you've been unmuted, and then you can go ahead and speak. If we still can't hear you, I'll let you know to unmute yourself as well. So um, with that, um, we will start with uh, Hillary Wolf. Hillary, you've uh, been unmuted. And we currently don't hear you. There you go. Sorry, um, I came in a little bit late, so I was wondering if you could repost the links. I'm in the process of doing that for you now, Hillary. Thank Great. you. Thank you. And really quick, for those of you joining by phone, and I do see a couple of you, um, you'll press pound or hashtag two, like the pound sign, um, to raise your hand. All right. So next we have Dave Snyder. Dave, I've unmuted your microphone. Thank you. And I put the same question in the chat. Um, it's a question about what you mean by timely implementation as one of the things that you're going to judge the applicants by. Is there anything more specific than that? For example, an expectation that the incentives should be fully distributed by a certain date? Um, Lisa, I'm going to let you handle this question. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, that's okay. More than happy to. Um, so timely implementation is that we, um, you know, we, we have the specifics will be in the grant or I'm sorry, in the solicitation around that. But what we mean by that is there will be deadlines established within the solicitation, like the funding will be available, for example, um, three years, maybe. And so we'll say like this program, we expect the funds to be spent within the three years of this grant. So it'll have, it'll have suggested timelines within it. And so what we're looking for is for applicants to bring us a project plan that considers those timelines and shows how in fact they would help move the incentives from inception to consumer during that timeline. Got it, got it, okay, yeah, okay. thank you. You bet. All right, thanks, David. Uh, next we have uh, Jonathan Chengis. Jonathan, your mic has been unmuted. Wonderful, thank you. Um, so appreciate kind of the walkthrough on, um, you know, the emphasis on partnerships and uh, CBOs and folks that have both experience in the intensive space as well as e-bikes. Is it going to be spelled out kind of a bit more in the grant as far as like big picture, what is the hope and dream of this initial e-bike program, um, recognizing that there's a lot of different use cases? Is it emphasis on equity? Is it raising awareness? Is there like 
a North Star of sorts that the e-bike is hoping to um, support because I think that could really inform what types of partnerships um, might might be um, pursued. I'm just curious if there's a bit more you can share on that front. Yeah, so it is spelled out quite a bit more in the solicitation as well as the sample grant agreement. Um, but as we've said um, in prior work groups that this will be an equity focused um, prop. We, we hope that this will be, we plan on this project being an equity focused project. So um, read into that what you will, but that is the, this, this will be an income capped, um, income required program that um, will be, that will be administered. Thanks, that's super helpful. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, and I've got a couple of questions that have come in um, in the Q&A. Um, first from Ashley Goldist, is there one application that manages this project for the state or is it by region, i.e. per air district? Um, Ashley, we envision this being one statewide project. However, um, the what we, again, what we're looking for is partnerships and those partnerships can absolutely include a regional focus um, it is, we recognize through the other work groups that we've held in development of the project that there are going to be different needs per different regions, right? Like folks in the Valley are going to probably need access to e-bikes in a very different way that folks in the Bay Area will be or in, or in um, more commerce type hubs in LA. And so um, we are looking for partnerships that address that and how kind of geographically we can make sure that we're not just making the best use of the funding in the program, um, but that we're really reaching the folks that can replace their, their traditional car with an e-bike um, for more, um, to reduce VMT and um, really you know, make the best of this type of technology. The next question that I have on the Q&A is, um, can you please clarify from Walter C. and Bob, can you clarify, are Council of Governments eligible to submit as a lead agency? Um, Walter, that's a great question. We would have to look at the bylaws of the Council of, of specific Council of Governments. So what the definition is right now when it comes to these types of grants is it has to be a, um, a public uh, governmental agency, uh, so state or local government and or a nonprofit. Um, when we're talking about things like um, uh, regional power authorities and council of governments, it entirely depends on how it's defined within the bylaws of those entities. Um, so it's honestly, it's kind of hard for me to answer that. Uh, if you wanted us to look into a specific uh, entity, I'd be more than happy to do that. You can just email Ari and I the information and we are happy to go look at the bylaws and get an understanding of whether or not it would qualify for you. Um, and then the last question that's come in from Karina Gonzalez is um, when will the RFP be released? And uh, we don't have a timeline. Oh, I'm sorry, are you already flagged that you'd answer that? So go for it. <laughs> yeah, um, we don't have we're we don't have an exact date yet. Um, but the hope is is that it will be released in the next one to two months. Um, and just as you got a notification oh, today about this work group, you'll also get, you'll also receive a similar notification, uh, letting you know that the solicitation has been posted, the teleconference date, and um, the closing date of the solicitation, I believe. So you'll, you'll get that information once it's posted. And once the solicitation does go live, um, you have 30 days uh, to submit an application. All right, Anthony, I think we've got some, other, some more hands raised. Yes, so we're gonna go now to uh, Piet Kanin. My apologies if I said your name wrong. Piet, your uh, mic has been unmuted. Go ahead and talk. Thanks. Um, so my question was, you say, you say that there's no um, cap on implementation cost. So do you have, can you give us some ideas of what you might think of as terms of implementation cost? I mean, obviously the administration and processing of these rebates, vouchers, but would it also include things like, you know, education and, and other, um, you know, um, resources for the consumer? Um, so yes and no. <laughs> 
Um, because the state budget does allow um, up to 10% of the $10 million, so a million dollars to be used for safety, uh, for safety course, like sa for safety education, um, that would not necessarily, you would want to have that be a line item, if that, if that makes sense. Whereas, yeah. Um, yeah, so it would be, it would like education in particular, because it was specifically called out in the budget would be a line item. And I don't believe we would consider that um, implementation costs or ad, or admin costs, um, but we would consider outreach as part, you know, outreach as part of um, admin costs or implementation, like in, as implementation costs. Great. Can you talk a little bit more about the, the safety item in, in the, um, the bill or the budget? No. <laughs> Sorry. So um, uh, basically, Piet, the way that it works is what we'll, what we'll be looking to you guys for is, um, is that, that what you expect the budget to be, again, from inception of the program, because the, the grantee that we select will help us finalize the details for how the, what the program is going to look like. By the time we're, we're trying to launch this so that we can bring in our partners to think through what, the, what all the final details of the program will be. And, and that's why today we're not discussing things like incentive amounts and all of that. Um, you know, we, we really hope to finalize that over the next several months. And we'd like our partner at the table to figure out, especially if we need something different within different regions, we want to be able to address that. So what we'd be looking for is a budget that identifies all the work it's going to take from inception of the program, really designing this program with us to getting those rebates into the consumer's hands and getting all of the rebate dollars spent by the timelines that we identify within the solicitation. And again, within that budget, you'll have, we, we, you'll have different line items by which all of that work would be accomplished. Um, and when you'd see the solicitation, um, this will make a little bit better sense. And you're more than welcome to look at, um, we do have a solicitations page and I'll drop that in the link in, the few in a few minutes that you can go look at prior solicitations that CARB has run. And it's, they're all relatively similar, similar. They're generally formulaic. Each project though does have different um, emphasis. Right, like in this program, there will be an emphasis on safety. So there's a million dollars allowed within this budget to be for safety education. And we're gonna look to, to you all in your applications to define how you would do that. What would that look like? What would that up to million dollars be spent on? Um, and then when it comes to things like outreach, how would you outreach? Well, who are your partners gonna be? And what types of things are they going to do to provide the right, what you think the right level of outreach is for these types of programs. And so you're gonna to need to think about what the ideal program is, a statewide program and how those things would be implemented. And that essentially is what your application package will, will help tell that story. Um, and your budget will help identify and lay out what that looks like. The other thing to emphasize that Aria said is you're going to want to make sure that what you're designing is scalable. Um, these programs have been known to get more funding in future years. You know, we've seen this time and time again, and I think that that's, um, that's a, a good kudos to the, the teams that we've brought in to implement the programs that we've run so far um, that we do, while we can always do better with what we're collecting and what we're reporting, um, Generally speaking, I think we're doing hopefully a pretty good job. Folks I think we're doing a pretty good job with these incentives since we've got another hopefully, you know, 1.5 billion coming this year's budget. Um, but that means more money for these programs means there's an opportunity to scale. And so keep in mind as you are building out your applications, what it would look like if there was another $10 million or what it would look like if we got another $20 million on top of it all. This solicitation will cover multiple years, which means we won't likely run another solicitation um, uh, if more money comes in, it's possible that we can take future money and, and award that to the grantee that gets this solicitation. It is also possible that we decide that we want to really restructure the program after a year. Maybe we try something and we think this is more, you know, we learned a lot from it in a pilot sense, in which case we might run another solicitation to reshape the way we've done our partnerships. It's hard for us to say until we've got the program up and running, but it's really important for you all to think about 
what would happen, what could happen, right? If you could, if you needed to adjust, what would that look like? If you needed to scale up, what would that look like? And, and make sure that your budget covers those types of scenarios. Does that help answer all your questions or the question that you put on the table? <laughs> yeah, thanks. And I have more questions, but I'll, I'll hold and give other people time. So if there's okay. time, thanks. Uh -huh. All right, next we have uh, Clarissa Kabunsagan. Again, Clarissa, I apologize if I got your, mispronounced your name. You have now been unmuted. Go ahead and ask your question. Am I, uh, hi, um, I put it in the chat box, but in an effort to develop partnerships with others across the state, mm -hmm. will you be sharing the list of participants on this call at all? That's a great question. And we, we did get this in another call yesterday. So, um, we don't do that only out of matter of whether or not there are folks on the call that would prefer that their information not be shared. And so what I offered um, yesterday is there's one of two things. You're more than welcome to drop your name and an email address um, in the Q&A um, and I can clear it so that other folks can see it. And that way folks can connect if they'd like. Um, you can also just email Aria and I and say, please make my information available to others that would like to kind of partner up and talk about this. And we're more than happy to connect you guys. Um, but we, again, because of, of PII and sharing information that other attendees might not want, we do not post the lists. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and I've got, oh, I'm sorry, Anthony, go ahead. Yeah, so um, Piet Kanin has another uh, question. Yeah, you can just unmute yourself. Sorry, so I, did, I just didn't lower my hand, but I, I mean, if no one else has raised their hand, um, you know, there's the time to do so. Um, I guess my, my follow-up question to the conversation earlier was about, you know, um, will there be more information provided by about the program be, before um, the solicitation, um, you know, ends for this administration? So um, once this, once we end, no, <laughs> just easily no. Once we end this, uh, this work group today, we're sort of gonna go into a mini cone of silence, if you will, um, just so that no one has any more information than another potential applicant. Uh, the solicitation, um, We'll have, um, we'll have everything you need to know to apply. Um, and also we'll be taking questions and providing answers at the, um, the teleconference that will, be, that will be held probably two or three weeks into the solicit, until in two or three weeks into the solicitation, um, solicitation period. Yeah, and, and we, up until now and when we actually launch the solicitation, it's very possible we'll continue to have um, development work groups. Um, we're, we are beginning work on developing the next year's funding plan for low carbon transportation and clean transportation incentives. Um, and because we're developing out that timeline, it's, we're still up in the air kind of staff wise on whether or not we're gonna have time to run another developmental work group before we launch the solicitation. Um, if we are, like, we definitely might do that. Um, if we don't, though, you know, we have had two work groups already that have shaped out what we expect the goals of the program to be um, and kind of, and have put a lot of questions on the table that we're still working through what we think the best approaches will be. And again, the purpose of us trying to run the solicitation as soon as possible is to bring a partner in to help us do that work. Right now, it is just ARIA. And we have, I've got one resource and Aria does a lot of other work too. And so we need partners at the table to be able to really shape this program and get it running. Um, and this actually to answer Marianne Hernandez's question that's in the Q and A kind of along the same line is when will the invent incentives be available to the public? We don't know yet. Our hope is that before the end of the year, we've got a program running. Um, but that again, that's gonna kind of depend on how quickly we can get the solicitation launched and get somebody brought in. Now. As for more detail, the solicitation itself will have more detail. It will have a scope of work, will have a basic scope of work that identifies what we think 
we're going to need our administrator to do. And again, we're going to be looking to you guys to look at that scope of work and adjust it. Tell us, yes, these are all totally things we can do. This makes sense. And we also think we need to do these other things. And here's our vision for how we would do all of this together. Um, if we've missed the mark in that scope of work, we're also going to look to you in your applications to tell us that. We wouldn't do these things. We would instead recommend doing these things and uh, doing these things. And here is how we would accomplish it. So what we suggest in the, again in the solicitation is what we would think, what we would expect our partner to do for us. But the whole purpose of the solicitation is for you to bring your ideas um, and your vision to how you would implement the program and how you would work with us to design what the program ultimately looks like. Great, thank you. You bet. Okay, uh, next with the raised hand, we have Jonathan Chengis. Jonathan, go ahead. Hi, yeah, I'm always happy to ask uh, more questions. And this one may be a little out of scope for today's conversation. So um, if that's the case, that's totally fine. But when we think about equity um, and hearing the idea of wanting to really um, replace kind of vehicles, miles traveled by internal combustion engines and emphasizing equity, we can do that as both supporting the low moderate income households themselves directly. We can also think about it as um, trying to reduce emissions and air pollution in the communities in which they live. And there could be some use cases, food delivery, couriers, some small commercial like small fleets that might yield really meaningful benefits. And so when we're thinking about equity, is that something that's potentially on the table? Maybe that'll get flushed out in the program or is it with the initial funding, $10 million for statewide is not, it's an excellent start. Uh, gonna be more focused on that LMI household versus the LMI community. Is that something you can expound upon at all? Or is that still an open conversation? I think it's an, still an open conversation. Um, yeah, it's, it's still an open conversation. <laughs> yeah, Jonathan, we're not um, not at all opposed to, and I think we've talked about this in some of the development work groups about making sure that, again, that we're meeting the mark on this. Um, there, I do think that there has to be a strong emphasis on, on the consumer uh, e-bike market, because I think that's generally the intent um, of the incentives, but I don't think that that means necessarily to include ensuring that, that or to exclude um, how we would look at communities, you know, service bikes and things like that, and having maybe a carve out for them in some way. Um, but those are all details that we'll continue to discuss in the work group. And that's, again, we need our partner to, to our partners to help us define exactly what that looks like over the course of the next several months. Thanks, I really appreciate that. And just really glad that this conversation is going forward. Thank you. Um, we've got a couple other questions that have come in on the Q&A that um, I'll address. Um, Walter Seenbaum um, mentions, you know, again, selecting one award winner from the solicitation that runs the statewide program. Yes, and I want to be, I do want to be crystal clear on this. The way that it works with the solicitation is um, there is typically a primary applicant. So it doesn't have to just be one, one entity. You can come in with partners. It's one primary applicant, but that applicant we expect to have partners that do different pieces. And let me let me paint a picture of what that would look might look like for you. Um, so one applicant say that um, say it's a, an outreach group and they, they are gonna be kind of the lead and the primary on it because of their relationships maybe with um, uh, municipal, uh, municipalities and uh, local air districts or, or whatever. Um, but then they have a partner that's going to actually process all of the dollars, right? Do all of the actual implementation of making sure that the dollars and the incentives are getting to the consumer, whether that's through the bike shops or directly to the consumer or however we end up structuring it. And so the primary applicant is kind of more of an outreach person. And then um, a, a, a sub or a partner is that, that person that's moving the dollars. And then maybe there's another partner um, that is working with the manufacturers, or maybe it is a bike manufacturer that offers a lot of different um, options. So 
it can be structured any way. It could be the implementer is the primary applicant bringing in the outreach pieces, or it could be, you know, the opposite approach. Um, and I think to build upon that, the next question within the box is from Ryan. I'm going to, I am going to skip pronouncing your name so that I don't butcher it. I apologize. Um, is the expectation that the administrator will, will generally focus on delivering bikes directly to end consumers rather than intermedi intermediaries like transit agencies or municipalities? This actually speaks to what I just answered with for um, for Jonathan, which is, I think that's still an open conversation. Um, and I think that while there is very much a piece of this that is intended to go bikes directly to end consumers, um, I don't think that that means that we can't also support transit agencies or municipalities um, or other fleet type options. And so we look forward to continuing that conversation in the development in the program development workshops. Um, and today, I think really what we want to make sure is that you guys as potential applicants have all the information that you need so that when the solicitation comes out, you've already started thinking about what your vision would be for the program and how you would administer it. Um, to give you a jump start on having a successful application at the end of the day. Um, a couple more questions that have, thank you, Ryan. <laughs> um, well, a couple other questions that have come in um, as well um, from Walter. Will the solicitation provide a rubric for scoring, more points addressing equity, et cetera? Oh, and, all right, go for it. Um, yes, they will. So if you, um, if you actually look at, our past solicitation, if you look at CARB's past solicitations, each solicitation has a scoring rubric attached to it. And so it will, it tells you exactly what you need to do or exactly what you need to provide in order to get a certain score um, or at least a certain range of score for each scoring topic. Um, but yes, our solicitation will, will provide a rubric for scoring and, um, it, the importance of each, I guess, topic within the scoring is, is noted or is represented by more points for something that we find more, we find more important, if, if that makes sense. And I have just dropped in the chat a link to our, our solicitations page where you can see examples of past solicitations. And again, the grants portal is a really, again, a great resource. If it's not already on your speed dial, you sh really should get it there. Um, but the grants portal has past solicitations um, and solicitations from other entities as well. Uh, and so um, what I would recommend is for folks to go to that page and look for, because I know we have other partners within state government that have offered components, um, e-bike component, e-bike incentive components um, to maybe smart growth through um, uh, SGC um, or Caltrans. And so it might be worthwhile to check to see if, uh, if there's anything there that can kind of help um, uh, help inform what what types of things you might want to do. And then again, our the way we structure them is on the link that I've posted. Um, and and Ryan, if you I will I will repost the grants portal again if you came in late and haven't seen it yet. Sorry, everyone. I thought I had shared the links portal, but it did not copy it. I accidentally shared an Airbnb. My apologies. Sorry, I thought I had copied and pasted the links portal, but yeah, it's um, hosted by the State Library, um, so I have my apologies. Um, okay, are there any other questions um, that people have that haven't been raised yet? I don't see anyone with their hand up currently, Aria. And I don't see any questions in the Q&A box. Um, so with that, we do, I just want to reiterate that we are planning on launching the solicitation in the next one to two months. And um, we will be going into a minimal cone, you know, a, a semi cone of silence uh, after this, um, after this uh, work group ends. But, um, but you know this work group is being recorded, so if you want some more clarification, if you want to repeat something, or you have colleagues that wanted 
to join this work group but were unable to, uh, it will be posted in the next couple of weeks. And um, there won't be any notice going out that it's posted. So please just check our website. And um, I'm going to leave the call open for a couple more minutes in case people miss something um, and people wanted to ask more questions. But yeah. Um, let me add one little point of clarification too, which is that when we say that we're going dark between now and when we launch the solicitation, we're just going to do our best to not answer a lot of questions. And the reason about the solicitation, and the reason for that is that we want to make sure that we are um, extreme, as transparent as possible and fair to every potential applicant. And so having sidebar conversations about what the solicitation should look like or what you should include in your application wouldn't necessarily be fair if it wasn't in a public forum. If you do have questions about the program itself um, and program development, those are we do consider that different because that is a public conversation that we have with all of our stakeholders throughout the entire time of development. And so um, if you do have questions about e-bikes or perspectives that you want to share in general that we should consider as we're developing our program, we are absolutely open to those conversations. But we will be steering clear of answering any specific questions about the solicitation. And then once the solicitation launches, we won't discuss the solicitation or the program. So during the time that it is open, we won't discuss e-bikes at all. <laughs> so just for that period of time. Um, so just so that that's clear, um, again, if you if you have things about e-bikes you want to talk about, you're more than welcome to reach out. Um, but we will we will not answer any questions after today about the solicitation itself. Um, Lisa, we actually have a couple questions in the Q and A box. Um, the first question is from Michelle Go. Um, after you select the organization, is there still public input slash work groups during the development of the ultimate program? Yes, there will be. Um, we are not going to design, we, we're not just picking a, um, an award winner of the solicitation and then going off in silence and designing this program. We will have, we will continue to have public work groups and have discussions and get input from the public on how this program should be designed and implemented. Um, yeah, we will not, we're not going to do this in a black box. This is not going to be something secret. We will continue to have public work groups and include and have a, a public and transparent discussion. Um, and then from Genevieve Serta, uh, to verify there will only be one award winner. So there will be one application that will be selected as the winner of the solicitation. Um, now, whether or not that's a partnership is based on the scoring and how well a partnership scores, but there will be one application awarded the, the solicitation. If, am I saying that right, Lisa? I'm sorry, say it again, I was responding to a chat. Okay, <laughs> there will be one applicant or application that will win the solicitation. Yes. Okay, whether or not that's a partnership, you know, is based on the application itself, but it won't be a single entity, it will be a single application or a single application that is submitted that wins the solicitation. Mm -hmm. um, Genevieve, does that answer your question? Do you need me to go into more detail? Okay, I'm just... okay awesome, thank you. Uh, thank you, Genevieve. Um, it looks like Lisa is typing an answer to a question. And then Ryan Schuhard asked, um, can, I, can you say again when the solicitation is likely to be available and the likely deadline? So solicitation should post in the next one to two months. And after it posts, there's 30, you have 30 days to apply. The solicitation is open for 30 days. Answer live, done. Um, Piet Cannon asked, will there be any partnership requirements such as CARB would like to see two to five partners for each application? There isn't a partnership requirement. We, we, would, we do want applicants to demonstrate strong partnerships with CDOs and other community-based organizations. Partnerships are really important and can also be helpful for managing a competitive budget. So we're not, it's not a requirement that you have a partnership. It is 
partnerships with CDOs and other and other community-based organizations are strongly encouraged. <laughs> Hope that answers your question, Pia. And sorry, everyone, I have the sniffles. Um, with that, it doesn't look like we have any more questions. Um, just because when I said we'll leave it open for a minute or two, we got an onslaught of questions. I'm gonna once again leave it open for a minute or two. Um, but yes, please reach out. Well, don't actually, never mind. Um, if, please reach out if you have any policy questions, but after today, we won't be, we won't be discussing the solicitation. Oh, uh, Anthony, it looks like we have a raised hand. Yeah, so Jimmy Lozana, go ahead. And it looks like you're still, oh, there you go. Okay. Can you see now? Yep. Yes, we can hear you. Great. Uh, just a quick question. Uh, those partnerships in the initial solicitation, if awarded, uh, will partnerships outside of that initial solicitation say that there's other partners that are discovered uh, after it's awarded, uh, would those be honored within within the, the grant? Or is it have to be part of, part of the solicitation um, submission? Can you, I'm, I'm sorry, can you? I understand the question. Okay. Um, that's a great question. Um, so what we'll be looking, what every grant and every, um, every administrator that we've brought on board to date, um, we've always gone through periods where we've adjusted who our, who their partners are within that grant. And so that is, that is absolutely okay. We do expect though, I think what we would expect is an application that demonstrates, you know, some partnerships. I don't think you have to necessarily have all of your partnerships specifically identified, but um, let me give you an example. So say you've got um, uh, partners identified in the Bay Area because you're, you know, you you have decided that you want to structure a, your program or the way that you're going to implement this on a regional basis. And you've got all your partners identified in the Bay Area and you still are looking for the right partners in, the, in Southern California. Um, your application, would demonstrate, you would want to demonstrate to us that you've developed those partnerships. Here are your partners in the Bay Area. Here is who you're planning to work with. We recognize that sometimes partnership might fall through, but we're going to want to make sure and we're going to expect you to demonstrate that they're they're relatively solid out, out of the gate um, and that you're, you have an intention of bringing in the partners in, the, in Southern California and are working to find those. Um, so you could certainly do that. I will say, however, though, that an application that comes in with partners, say their structure is very similar to yours, and they come in with partners identified in the Bay Area and in Southern California, that likely is going to score them higher because they have pulled all their partners together already, right? But that doesn't mean that you couldn't apply and say, we are still looking for partners in these areas. We think it's important to have separate partners in all these areas. Um, that would be okay. That would be acceptable, but it would likely score a little bit less. Does that answer your question? Sure does. Awesome. Thank you, Jimmy. Um, we have some more questions in the Q&A box. I'm going to first address uh, Kathleen Kehan's question, question. I might have missed this. Is there any specific requirements on the types of e-bikes eligible? Are any types of e-bikes excluded? Um, thank you, Kathleen. So as I said at the beginning, we were not, we're not going to be talking about, we, we, we did not, and we are not talking about um, any kinds of eligible bikes or ineligible bikes. I would like to say how, I would like to, however, point to the state budget that does specify which types of bikes are eligible, and it's e-bikes, and that includes folding e-bikes, cargo e-bikes, and passenger, and e-bikes that carry passengers. Um, but other than that, I won't, we're, we're not going to be speaking to that today. Thank you. Um, and then a couple other questions as well. Um, um, first from Piet, are there any financial or other requirements for an entity who's going to be distributing um, state dollars? 
Uh, great question. There is, and again, if you look at our prior solicitations, um, I, I apologize, I don't have all of those requirements listed out, but we do have a set of requirements that are consistent across all of our grants. So if you look at that solicitations page that I posted in the chat, um, you can see, you can kind of look at that base general language and there are, there's a whole host of requirements. And so um, when we put out the solicitation, we will have a sample grant included and that sample grant will also list all of the specific requirements by which an entity has to make sure that they are able, um, they are able to fulfill their duties. And so there are you know, things about how you do some banking, um, how you would collect and maintain interest, how you report all of that information to us. So there's a lot of, there are reporting requirements, um, there are banking requirements and things like that. Again, you can see some of that now because it will be posted in prior solicitations. It is generic language that is used across all of our grants. Um, <clears throat> we do periodically update that to kind of align with, um, with state mandates. Um, for grants, but usually it's not too it's not too significantly different from what you would see before. So I highly encourage you to look at past grants if you have not applied to one of these before. Um, look at past grants uh, and um, and see what's there in those general terms and conditions. And then uh, a question coming in from um, from Ryan. Um, recognizing that the design and implementation plan is pretty open-ended at this point, are there specific constraints about the use case of e-bikes for commercial or business applications? Um, I think we've covered this um, a, a couple times already. Um, there, there are not, again, the focus of this incentive program, um, as we've talked about in the other work groups, is um, to focus on getting incentives to consumers to use e-bikes. However, that does not necessarily mean that we wouldn't be open to carving out some funding to potentially be for um, you know, business, for transportation of goods on e-bikes and things like that. But those are all conversations for us to have in the policy work groups for developing the program. Um, and in our minds, an implementer, a strong implementer for these programs is somebody that's gonna have an idea about how you would do both of those things. And so, and if, if you don't, please, this is where partnerships are so very important and we can't emphasize that enough. If you maybe have a great idea for how you would get the dollars, say to businesses, but you don't really have the experience or have a great idea for how you would get the incentives to the consumer, find a partner that does. Work with other entities that do have that experience and you will bring something to the table and they will bring something to the table. And I think together, and this again, why partnerships are so, I can't emphasize it enough, Together, you might bring a real stellar application and then, you know, together us and our partner, you um, will be able to deliver a program that is that is funded for many years to come, which is what we're our goal is, is to have a successful program that gets e-bikes in communities that can that need them, that can use them, help displace um, uh, car travel um, and, and really kind of get that equity focus in with this project. So partner up guys, partner up, talk to one another. It's really important. Um, and Andrew, I'm going to thank you for that comment to share your information next. Once again, if anyone has any more com any questions or comments, feel free to add them to the Q&A box or raise your hand. Um, if not, we will close this meeting in a few minutes. And I think, you know, I thank everyone for being here and for all the great questions. And um, I look forward to continuing to develop this project and work with each and every one of you. Oh. oh, thank you, Ryan.
Um, thank you everyone for joining today's work group. Um, with that, we are going to end the meeting. Uh, so have a have a really good day and a really and a great weekend. Thank you.